Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at uh, this month's webinar on virtual collaboration tools. We're so excited to have you here. And uh, if you've joined a webinar before, you might know that we really like to have audience participation as we go. So what I'm gonna do is ask everyone to chat in uh, their answer to a question, but let me just go over some ground rules first. Um, make sure that you uh, set your chat, if you open the chat on your Zoom, set it to um, everyone instead of just panelists. Um, so send it to panelists and attendees or everyone so that everyone in the meeting can see your awesome answers and we can kind of have a more of a conversation with each other than just a kind of seminar style. We really want it want you guys to be involved. So as you switch that, um, the, the starter, the icebreaker question I wanna ask is what has your quarantine uh, new hobby been? So, you know, I'll just go first. Mine is really boring, but it's amazing. It's sourdough bread. I don't know if anyone else has started making sourdough. Um, if you're a sourdough person, let me know in the chat. Um, but what is your quarantine activity that you've done for the last months or a uh, few weeks? Let us know in the chat. And Benson, I would love to know what yours is. Well, uh, good morning for you. Good afternoon from my end. Um, I suppose for me, the biggest change has been having more time at home with kids. Um, I'm able to leave the office earlier. I've got two under two. Uh, my oldest is about to turn two and my youngest is nine months old. So afternoons at the park, uh, going out on the local trail, just having more time at home with the kids and being able to see all those milestones has been for me easily the, the biggest change and the real silver lining of the pandemic. So good. That's, that's probably everyone's highlight of quarantine too, just spending time with your family and getting a little bit more time um, at home. Oh my gosh, Tammy started health coaching and getting healthier. That is awesome. Um, Looks like I have a fellow sourdough person, Nicole. Uh, awesome. What is your secret? What does your dough look like? Tell me. Um, floral arrangements, Holly, that is so cool. Um, Martin, who's the marketing, my case, uh, webinar attendee is cooking French cuisine. Amazing. Um, Rewatched every OU football game since 2004. <laughs> is that true, Stephen? That is incredible um eating everything for those who have just joined what is your quarantine activity that you've been up to thank you so much to those who have sent in um time to think says pablo that's great um steven i need to know about like what's your favorite game do you have a favorite game let let me know in the chat okay Amazing, thank you all for joining. Remember to every time we play tea. Awesome. Um, Go Huskers says William, reading a ton of books says Amy. So good. Uh, it sounds like you all have made some sunshine out of your quarantine by, by finding new activities. Awesome. Um, I don't know, Stephen, you know, Benson here is from Texas. I don't know if there's some kind of rivalry going on. We can get into that later. Uh, reading and watching Auburn football and Critical Role. Oh, I haven't heard of Critical Role. That sounds really good. Well, thank you all so much. Um, again, please flip your chat to panelists and attendees so that everyone can see your awesome answers and continue to send in questions during this time. Um, you, they can be questions about my case as a product or just about what Benson has said during the webinar. So let's get started. Um, our purpose today is to talk about the collaboration challenges that law firms face um, not only during this time, but also when things are normal and everyone's kind of in the office. Um, and we're going to be showing you the features in my case that will that are designed to help you stay connected. So Benson is going to be demonstrating those today. Um, and really quickly as an overview, my case uh, is a law practice management software that allows you to work from anywhere, uh, work from home, work from the office, work from the beach, you know, wherever you are. Um, and keeps your business running smoothly. And Benson is a, is a customer of my case, longtime customer. So he's gonna um, demonstrate the product today. My name is Casey. I have been working at my case for about five years, a little over five years, and I absolutely love helping law firms meet their goals and grow their business uh, through technology. It's uh, a little bit of a, 
uh, rubbing point law and the legal sphere and technology, but it's coming together rapidly now that COVID has kind of uh, hit us and, and we need a little bit more help uh, getting stuff done on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I will gladly welcome Benson, um, who is the managing partner of Varghese Somerset in Texas. Um, he's the founder of Varghese Somerset. He has recently been named uh, an entrepreneur of excellence from, uh, oh, sorry, from, where was that from Benson? That was from Fort Worth Magazine. Fort Worth Mag, that's awesome. Um, he's a top attorney and uh, a super lawyer rising star. And in 2019, he pushed his firm to become the sixth fastest growing company in Fort Worth, not law firm, but company. So welcome Benson, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, absolutely, thank you for having me. Yes, awesome, and we'll learn more about Benson as we go. So we're gonna be going over five virtual collaboration tools today, um, and we're gonna get started with internal chat. So this is a feature that allows you to talk with the folks in your firm um, in a way that's linked to cases and uh, that's that's easy for everyone to um, to kind of see at a quick glance what's going on in the firm. Um, since we released this feature, 66% of our customers um, have used this on a daily basis. And this feature was released recently uh, in response to COVID. So we're really excited about um, just the adoption we've seen here. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Benson to share his screen and go over what that looks like. All righty. Here, let's see if I can get my screen shared. And I'm going to maximize this window. And Casey, can you see that okay? Perfect. Yep, looks great. Okay, perfect. So um, as I get into the chat tab, which you'll see here, there's an icon third from the left that kind of brings up this um, chat tab. Um, it's one of the newer features on my case. And what um, I like using it for is just the ability to talk to the firm about something that is time critical. So we typically use the standard messages to update each other. My firm has about 12 members, seven of which are attorneys. Um, it, there, there are occasions where I need to tell an associate about something that's happening on an upcoming setting. So we're still having um, Zoom settings in criminal courts. Uh, and so if I need to let them know something about a setting that's coming up very quickly and I wanna ensure that they've seen it, chat is a great way to do that as opposed to a message which they may not see immediately. So Casey, I'm gonna try sending you a message here, which um, if you've sent a previous message to a person, you can just pull up their name, or if I was searching for someone, um, I could just search right here, type in their name and get to it that way. So we're in the chat tab with Casey, I'm going to send you a message. Great. I can type. <laughs> Great. Perfect. And I will reply. Well, there you go. And so I'm going to have you reply one more time as I minimize this window, Casey. So if you're working, as you will be on many other cases and um, have perhaps a different tab open, you can one, minimize it, and it'll sit in the bottom right corner where you can minimize it all the way. Casey, if you'll send me another message. Yep, you'll got see it. Right here, if you guys can see the top of my screen that I got an instant notification that you had sent me a message, and I can just toggle the minimize screen back over and see that you have sent me a message. So that's kind of the immediacy and the value of that added chat feature, um, at least in terms of how we've been using it. Awesome. And um, this feature, if you're familiar with Slack for those on the call, um, or perhaps Microsoft Teams, this is meant to kind of uh, take the place of that or uh, be used in a similar way. Um, if you have questions on this, please type them in to the chat. And yes, you can use emojis. That is very important. Uh, Benson, can you just pull up the emojis so we can see that, oh, yeah. you know, they're the standard emojis. They're not weird ones. Look at that. They're, they're the good ones. So. Yeah. I haven't even checked that, that's great. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so, great. Um, for those of you who have used Slack, um, you can obviously create channels up here, um, 
create a new channel by just typing in a name, decide who you want to be on that channel. And um, we have an example channel up here. And if you, you can constantly go back to that channel to provide updates about the case and importantly associate it with the case so that um, if we had a chat going on, it would be um, associated with the case under the communications tab so that every time you go back to the case, you can still access it, which obviously with all of the messaging um, associated with my case is an important feature so that everything related to the case is in one place. Yep, perfect. Thanks for showing that, Benson. Um, okay, type in your questions. We have someone on call to answer them if you have any questions about internal chat, but let's move on to e-signature. Okay, so the e-signature feature is a, well, and let me explain what I'm doing before I just start moving all across the screen. Um, the way I use my case, there are so many ways to get to a particular case. Um, you can go to the cases tab at the top, search for a case. Um, I'm gonna go into a case that we recently worked on. So your recent activity is always on the homepage. So I'm just gonna go into that case and kind of walk you through using an e-signature from the template. Um, the e-signature feature is really valuable for getting signatures on documents that don't require any additional edits. So if you have a standard form that you're sending to clients and all you need is their signature, not any of the uh, fields changed, the e-signature template is a great way to do that. Um, just so you know, if you want to send a document that you're putting in specialized fields, you can do that. And what you would do is actually create a new document as opposed to what we're going to do, which is create an e-signature form. So um, I'll, again, to follow along, I'm clicking the add button, the blue button on the right. Um, once I'm in the case and I went to the document sub tab, went over to add e-signature from template, and um, you will have created these templates in advance. Here we have a uh, payment agreement that we've already created and you can set up on your templates whether you just need a client signature or if you will also be countersigning the document once it's complete. So you select the template that you wanna use, save the document. You can add a description if you'd like. Um, it's very intuitive. You just hit next to set the signers. So this is Casey's case and I would like Casey to sign it. And I'm gonna countersign the document after she has agreed to pay. You can require that um, all the signers sign with an actual signature as opposed to typing in their name. Um, we don't require that here in Texas. So I'm just gonna hit next where I'll be able to preview the document before it's sent out. And you'll see here, this is a standard template that we're gonna be using. When Casey gets this in a moment, she's gonna be able to sign uh, in the blue, and once she has signed, I'll get it back to then countersign in the orange. So I've confirmed, I've previewed and confirmed that's what I want the document to look like. And all you have to do is hit save and continue, and you'll be taken back to step four. And all you have to do is hit send now. And in a moment, Casey's about to get an alert that I've sent her a request for a signature. Yep, let me pull it up on my phone. All right, signature requested from Benson Varghese PLLC. And of course, in this case, I am demoing what the client would see. So I see the document that he just sent over. Uh, if you can see on my phone, I'll go ahead and hit sign. It pulls up a screen that looks like this. So I can just sign with my finger, la la la. Uh, certify that I am myself and send it over to Benson for counter signature. Let me just submit that and send it back to you, Benson. Perfect. And when Benson gets it, it will actually, uh, it'll alert him on the, the page that I signed. So let me just send that over. Okay, just submitted it. Perfect. So when I sent it, you noticed that an orange uh, circle popped up here letting me know that I have in fact sent it for a signature. If I refresh my screen or I've come back to it um, at a later point, I'll see the orange is gone and it now prompt, prompts me to 
countersign. So I can pull up the document, view Casey's signature. I can sign myself. And of course, there's also a way to just type your name, but I can sign myself, confirm that I am Benson, do the same thing down here. And you have the e-signature details from when Casey filed it at the bottom. And when I hit submit, I'm going to go back to the same screen. And now you'll see I've got the green icon that tells me the document has been signed by all parties. And of course, anytime I need to look at it, I can just pull up the document um, and take a look at the signed document, but also both of the e-signature details, should I ever need that. Awesome. So Claudia in the chat said it's so much easier than Adobe and easier for the client to use. Thanks for that feedback, Claudia. It really is supposed to be the most convenient signing experience for clients. Um, and we want to make sure that there's no delays or uh, you know third party software needed. So this is all built into my case for the, the normal monthly price. And if there are questions on that, please put them on the chat. Uh, to keep us moving along, let us talk about intake forms, virtual intake forms. Yeah, of course, I've, there we go. Hard to close that out when I'm on full screen. There we go. Okay. An intake form, um, at least the way I use it, is a great way to get additional information from a client. So for me in, in my criminal practice, uh, an example might be, I have a client who's faced with a DWI. He or she is going to have some license consequences. So those particular questions about their driver's license, their driver's license number, if they got a notice of suspension, those may not be questions that I ask when I first talk to them. And it may not be information that I can readily pull from a public source. So by sending them a form, um, I can ask them essentially anything I want. Obviously, another way to use that would be simply to um, use it as an intake form where it is your primary source of getting information if someone walks into your office and you want some basic information about them before they um, sit down and do a consultation with you. So once again, let's go into a case and you'll see one of the sub tabs is intake form. And let's just add again, kind of following the same format, there's a blue button to the right. You can add an intake form select which of the intake forms that you'd like to use. And let's just, um, I can't remember which of these will be the shortest for you to respond to, Casey, but let's just go with uh, the Whichever one is fine. Okay, and um, again, you can pull down your client's information. It'll pre-populate that client's information so it'll be sent to the right person. You can obviously change the subject and message if you'd like, but all you have to really do is hit save and send. And once again, uh, the form, and gets to your client immediately. And so Casey should have received on her phone yep. the UI intake form. Well, first of all, I got a, an email that telling me that my e-signature was all good to go. And now I have this lovely intake form. Um, again, this is extremely simple for clients. Uh, we actually have a customer uh, whose name is Jason Kohlmeyer who told us that it took it it took his onboarding time from eight days to one day by using digital intake forms. So if you're, if you're looking to speed up your intake, this is one way to do it. Um, and let me just fill out my info here and submit it. All right, sent it back to you. I didn't fill it out all the way. Perfect, so I refreshed my screen and I can see that uh, you've sent it back and that um, it was sent back today. So if I, if I wanted to look at a completed form, I could pull that up and take a look at it. But it, it is literally that easy. And as you saw, you can create any number of forms that you might use for different practice areas or uh, types of cases. Awesome. And Benson, do you personally use this at your firm or um, do you, you have staff members who use it who primarily uses this feature? So our intake process is a little bit different. I know we're going to talk about leads here in a minute, um, or I might at least touch on it. Our intakes are generally done over the phone front, and then they'll, they might come in for a follow-up or they might have a Zoom follow-up. Where I really use the intake forms are for additional information gathering, things that 
may not have come up during our phone conversation or just wouldn't make sense to you know, bog them down with all that information. Um, so it really does help me say, hey, here's the type of information. And of course, when you get new associates, it makes it easy for them to know, well, this is the type of information that the partners or other associates are gonna need on this particular case. Awesome, thank you. Um, and uh, Sarah asked if we could see what the intake form looks like when a client opens it. If you look at, if you click there and then you can, there should be a button that says, what does my client see? Oh, there we go. Um, or maybe we have to do a new form because I already filled this one out. All right, get out of the full screen again, sorry about that. That's fine. Let's add a new intake form. Oh, so yeah, the what does my client see at the bottom right will, or left, sorry, will show us what a client sees. So Sarah, this is what an intake form will look like. Um, you can see that uh, it, it'll, ha you'll have an email that says view intake form. And then it's basically just a list of fields that you can open up um, and the, the client can fill out kind of like an Amazon, you know, if you're trying to purchase something on Amazon, it, it looks similar, just square boxes uh, to fill in all your fields. And you can also have required fields in there. So, you know, if you need it to be a bank number, you can make sure that they can only insert numbers or, you know, a certain amount. Um, if you need it to be a text field or a date field, you can do those as well. Great question. And thanks, Benson, for the additional context. Yeah, absolutely. All right, um, let's move on to two-way texting. This is my favorite one. And I know that you use this for leads too, so we can hear a little bit about how you use it. Um, <clears throat> kind of intuitively, I went back to the home screen because this is really home-based for everything. But you would go into a case and one of the main tabs at the top is communications. Hey, Benson, really quick, would you mind expanding your screen? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for reminding Thank you. Sure. Okay. Let's do that again. So from home base or the home screen, you can go into any case or again, search for a case um, really using uh, the search feature at the top right. Once you go into a case, um, I'll call these main tabs under the third main tab, you'll see a sub tab for text messages. And that will pull up text messages associated with this case. So um, we've got Casey and Martin both with my case associated with this case. And as you can see, we've had an ongoing conversation uh, which you might have with a client and you can either pick up right where you left off or um, for us, again, trying to address that immediate need for someone who's walked into the courthouse. Our courthouse has eight floors and there are multiple courtrooms on each floor. So a question that might come up is, hey, I'm on the fifth floor, what am I looking for? So man, there. And that way they can get an immediate response. Can you, I'm not sure if I'm blocking part of that screen, but the client can get an immediate response of um, here's you know, where your courtroom is or here's what you can look for. Um, again, the way we operate a lot of the standard messages are going to come in through our just messages tab, but those answers that um, need an immediate response because they're on their phone, they're looking for something, it's a great time for us to use the two-way text feature. And uh, Casey, you'll, you'll probably be able to yeah. respond to that message. Yeah, let me just show what the message looks like. Just looks like a normal text message uh, coming through on my phone. Get a peek of my sourdough bread there too. Um, and it says, look for the court labeled 113th. So I'm gonna respond and say, thanks, Benson. And uh, it'll appear on his side as a reply message um, right there. So this is a great way, like Benson said, to meet clients where they're at communication wise. I think right now um, with working from home and just with the you know struggle of the pandemic, it, you know, communication, it needs to be as easy as possible, frankly, and, and emailing or phone calls or Zoom calls can feel a little bit tedious. So um, if you really need to get a hold of your attorney, or if as an attorney, you really need to get a hold of your client, um, and, you know, they're very comfortable with text messaging, this is an excellent way to have it all put into one place in your practice management, um, and not have to give out your personal phone number, which is something that we've heard is a huge benefit from this as well. 
um, because Benson, I'm sure you know, Benson is a criminal defense attorney. If you give away your personal phone number, it's out there forever. <laughs> it's out there at 3 a.m. when people are texting you. Um, and it's just much better to have a place where you can anonymize that number and keep everything in one place. Yeah, from a criminal defense attorney's perspective, you know, I've seen too many phone dumps, which are forensic analysis of phones that have been seized by a law enforcement agent. And I've seen attorney client privilege conversations in text messages from phone dumps. The great thing about using a cloud, cloud based service like my case is the message remains at least um, other messages and certainly the conversation on our end remains in the cloud. Um, so I personally don't use the text message feature for anything that I would consider confidential because the messages themselves, if we switch over to kind of our main messages tab within a case, um, those remain in the cloud and never become uh, part of, you know, what's on a person's phone. Um, so that's kind of an additional value for me so that um, even though I can use this for, um, I keep going to the wrong place, even though I can use this for immediate responses, the main messages tab is where I would, you know, communicate anything that was confidential. Great. Um, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sue. Sorry. Go Sorry. for it, Benson. The other thing I was going to add is um, we really love using text messages to follow up with our leads. So the way I have my leads organized, which are, um, you know, just folks who are interested in hiring you, I've got this set up as, um, you know, someone who hasn't talked to an attorney yet, first contact, second contact. If um, I try to follow up with them, let's say the next day, I've had a conversation with them, now I'm just trying to follow up, or maybe we've missed each other when I try to return their call. Um, I follow up by text message and I say, hey, here's my office number, call me if you'd like to reply to this text um, to set up a specific time to talk, let's do that. And I found, again, the immediacy of a text message and just letting them, letting them know you're available can get you that return phone call and hopefully convert that lead into a client. So for the way we run our practice, it, the text messaging feature has been a great value add to just convert more clients. Awesome. Thank you, Benson. Um, and Steven says he agrees 100% on the texting. He uses it all the time. Um, he says it's also great when a client says you didn't communicate with them, but it's all saved in their file. Have you come across that too, Benson? Yeah, absolutely. And that's you know one of my favorite things about um, my case. It doesn't matter if I send a letter, send them a message, text message. Everything's in one place. And I think as I you know talk to uh, the criminal bar, that's one of the things that I'm always touting. If, uh, for those of us who are in the criminal area, it's only a matter of time before someone says, you didn't do what you're supposed to do, because that's, a, that's one way to get out of a sentence, perhaps. Um, and so having everything in one place saves you so much time. Awesome. Thank you. And I'm loving the chats. Please keep them coming in. Um, Okay, great. So last we have text message reminders. So this is a little bit, it's still text messaging, but it's a little bit different and relates to um, getting paid a little bit faster. So I'll turn it over to you, Benson. Absolutely. Uh, a very important part of what we do, as much as we may love our work, we've all got, um, you know, families to support and bills to pay. And, you know, you want to be able to communicate that a person's bill is outstanding or perhaps even past due without being obtrusive. Um, kind of the same reason I never, I try not to ever have to talk to my clients about billing. I let my staff talk about it. I want to be the attorney focused on their case and their problems. Same kind of thing. The uh, way you can notify someone that they have an outstanding invoice is very easy um, to send by a text message, which I'll walk you through in a moment. And it's unobtrusive. It's not someone calling on the phone saying, hey, you have a payment due today or hey, you're two weeks behind or two months behind. So again, from the home screen, I just clicked into a case. I'm gonna go over to the time and billing tab, go to invoices and pull up my first invoice. And right here at the top, you'll see a small icon that looks like a phone and it's really this easy. You click send a link. And again, we're gonna use Casey as our test client. And you'll notice this is going directly to her phone. 
and she's going to walk you through what she receives once she clicks on this link. And you'll notice from the client's end, no login is required for this next step. So I'm going to send this invoice payment link over to Casey and Casey, tell us what you get. Great. All right. So pulling up my text message here from Benson, it says Benson's name, the phone number it came from, and uh, it says pay online. So uh, it says your invoice is ready for payment and has a little link there to uh, my case straight to the invoice page. So I'm going to click on that. And what pulls up is exactly what Benson saw on his side, um, the, uh, this invoice right here. So it has uh, also a, a payment page. Again, like you'd see on Amazon, just your name, your credit card number. Um, I'm sorry I've been past due on this for so long. I, I really feel bad, Benson. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just fill that in. Um, and then there's a button that says make payment and I, I can pay in full or I can pay um, you know, an, an amount uh, against it, which will register on Benson's side and show that it's been partially paid or fully paid. Um, so again, it was instant. I got the link automatically. Um, and as Benson said, there's no kind of hassle login situation. Um, it just pulls up a payment page and then that goes directly into either the trust or operating account, um, whichever one you've specified for the specific invoice. Yeah, we were uh, joking the other day that we want to make it as easy for our clients to pay us as many of the uh, big online retailers have made it and you end up, you know, making these purchases without a second thought. It is really that easy and I appreciate that they don't have to log in to make that, that payment. Yeah. And I want to do a, a quick plug. We're not going to go into it here, but we just released the ability to have a subscription set up um, for payment. So uh, if you have an ongoing payment uh, that goes for in perpetuity, for example, I know a, a, an estate planning firm who I think charges forty dollars a month to keep up the estate for as long as it uh, for as long as it exists. You can have several subscriptions going in that way, um, and also send these payment links on on those to make sure that they get paid. If a credit card you know changes or gets declined, you're still able to remind clients or you know contact them via text to to get that resolved. So um, that is text message reminders. Any questions on that? Put them in the chat, and we will we will address them. Um, okay, awesome. And before, uh, let me just quickly, Benson, if you don't mind sharing the, or um, unsharing the screen so I can share mine really quick. Um, thank you. Wanted to do a quick recap and um, answer the, the remaining questions at the same time. So um, we went over internal chat, which allows you to real-time message members of your team. Um, it's a centralized system for all of the records that go back and forth. Again, that collaboration is all in one place. Um, and you can have dedicated channels for different firm matters, which is really essential to keeping um, all firm related, uh, you know, communications centralized and organized. Um, and we went over e-signature. Um, we've found that this has become a standard in a lot of folks firms. Um, a couple of you on the line, uh, I use it as well. So we're so glad to hear that. Um, again, you can prepare and sign routine documents really easily. Um, it's a convenient experience for clients. And that's so important to make sure that you're not putting impediments in the way of essential tasks that clients need to do. Um, you're actually providing a way that it, it's as easy as possible for them. And then there's no delays or third party software. So instead of having to go and set up another subscription, it's all within my case. Next, we went over intake forms. So um, as Benson mentioned, you can use it to get supplementary information on a case for a client, um, or you can use it as a way to, to onboard um, potential clients and make sure that you have all the necessary information for them before getting into the nitty gritty. Um, they, like I mentioned, they've reduced the time it takes to onboard clients significantly for a ton of our customers. Um, and it allows you to streamline everything, put it all in one place. Um, it's instantly pushed into the client's case. So you can, uh, you don't need to do any data entry from some other form or, or you know, paper form to your case management. It's all in one spot. And then again, you can eliminate any uh, manual or duplicate or um, 
error messages that come up uh, when you're transferring that data from the intake form to your to your case management system. And uh, we went over two way texting. I see the questions coming through. Thank you. We're answering those. Um, which is a great way to communicate with clients who don't use email or clients who would just prefer using text messaging. Um, you can quickly connect it to clients and lead securely, keep a centralized record of your text communications, and then you know, anonymize your cell phone number, which is super important. Um, and lastly, text message reminders. So these are really designed to help you get paid faster. And like Benson mentioned, avoid those awkward conversations about getting paid um, and instead provide a really convenient way for clients to do so. Um, you can eliminate you know, your, your manual payment reminders. You can send easy payment links to your clients and you can also ac activate automatic payment reminders. So you don't actually need to go in and click the button as we did, but instead clients will get those reminders automatically um, and be able to pay quickly. So with that, uh, let me just double check that the questions have been answered. Let's see, the preview is, let's see, ideal firm size and practice areas that fit for the solution. Great question, Patrick. Um, so my case is designed for any and all firm sizes and any and all practice areas. Um, we have everything from IP law to criminal defense like Benson, family law, um, in every practice area uses my case. Uh, I'm curious, Patrick, what your practice area is and how large your firm is. Would love to know that just for, for reference. Um, and thank you, Cameron, for answering that question. There's also one question in the Q&A. Can you add your own detail to the description field of bills or are there set entries? Um, Benson, I'll let you take that one. Yeah, so I'll touch on both of those topics briefly. I grew the firm from essentially being myself to um, at one point we had closer to 15, it's about 12 right now. And I have found the my case platform to be extremely scalable. Um, it's also customizable. So you can absolutely go in and set custom fields. You can decide what your forms are gonna look like. We have a number of custom fields that we've developed that are specific to criminal defense. And obviously um, I'm happy to share those with anyone else in the criminal defense space. But I would imagine in any practice area, you can create your own fields if they're not part of the standard field options. So it's it's a very adaptable platform. And um, you know, I, I do these um, webinars just as a satisfied client. Um, happy to do them. Um, obviously, I don't receive anything for doing them. So this is really uh, my genuine opinion about uh, the platform and what I think about it. Awesome. Um, and then Catherine, really quickly to answer your question about description fields of bills, um, you can add your own details. Um, I just wanna say quickly too, uh, that Benson is in Texas. He has had a ton of um, uh, hardships, I would all say over the last few weeks, obviously with the weather situation there, and he's still managed to come join us on this uh, webinar. And I just wanna say like our customers are fantastic. We absolutely love you, Benson. We absolutely love the customers on the call. Um, you know, and we're, we're so thankful for your advocacy and, and your, you know, that you're happy customers. That's all we want. Um, and Pablo says, can you introduce different levels of grades uh, for the info that appears in the, in the platform? For instance, billing can't be accessible to all employees. Oh yeah, so you're talking about permissions, Pablo. And yes, we do have a tiered permissions feature so that you can control who sees what. Thanks so much for asking that question. Okay, um, to wrap it up, uh, that was short and sweet. We, uh, as you go, you will see, um, we ask you if you want a, a demo of my case, a personalized demo. Um, if you don't use my case and you wanna learn more, it's a very quick call, just 10 minutes to uh, learn how my case can be used for your practice. Uh, Patrick, I think that you might be a good candidate for this just to see how it would work specifically for your firm. Um, and quickly, 96% of customers would recommend my case to a friend. Benson being one of them, we're so thankful for our happy customers and you know, our whole job and our whole goal is to make our customers happy. So we love seeing this number. Um, and 83% have said that my case helps them improve their client's experience, which is just a crazy number. Um, and as we all know, the better experience your clients are having, uh, the more referrals you're gonna get in that way. Um, and I think too, just with the collaboration, um, you know, virtual collaboration features we've been talking about, 
this is this is really a hard time for everyone and um, and it's it's not we don't take that lightly and we're obviously innovating we're always innovating new features to make sure that your your life is easier and your needs are met during this time like e-signature internal chat text messages etc um so i am so you know thankful for everyone who has joined um, thank you so much to benson who uh absolutely crushed this webinar you're awesome um and any last last words, Benson? Uh, my number's on the screen. Um, after every webinar, I get people who call me, uh, particularly folks who are in the area or who practice criminal defense, happy to take the call. Um, you know, it's a very, as I said, adaptable platform. Um, it's grown with us. Um, I will tell you, I really geek out when I'm looking for the right product for my firm. And um, one other thing that I, I suppose hasn't really been touted yet is um, I love their pricing model. This is not a platform where every bell and whistle costs more, which um, many competitors do. So that's been another reason we've had them, I think, going on eight years. Um, and we're just thrilled in case you always do a wonderful job with these. So again, thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you so much, Benson. And thank you so much to all the panelists, um, or sorry, to all the attendees, all the panelists single, and all the attendees multiple for joining us. Um, and please reach out to me if you have any questions too. I hope to see you again at the next one. Bye everyone. All right, thank you, Casey. Bye, thanks, Claudia. Thanks, Mark. All right.